Hi, I'm Patricia Baird-Clark, and this is a first in a series on how to minister to satanically richly abused persons based on understanding what uh, magic surgery is and about the structure of the inner world. So if you have not seen my first series on uh, magic surgery and the structure of the inner world, I suggest that you would listen to that before starting this video. So based on what I taught in that previous series, uh, we can learn some valuable things on how to minister to people who've been satanically richly abused. And one thing that we need to understand about them is that their mind is incredibly complex. When you consider uh, what happens to a person's mind after many, many years of abuse, uh, when they've split into many altars, sometimes hundreds or thousands of altars because the only uh, coping mechanism they ever learned was dissociation and many of them learned it in the mother's womb and uh, not only is there abuse going on at rituals but there's abuse going on at home and in many situations of life so a person can split many many times and, uh, and that's, as I explained demons are assigned to every alternate personality so you've got inside a person uh, multiple personalities, uh, even more demons. Uh, there are many levels in the structure where personality parts are trapped and locked away and guarded by demons. There are booby traps uh, set uh, in various places. Some of them uh, are bombs even attached to the person. Uh, and should they ever begin talking, uh, there's all kinds of programming there are altars in the person that were trained to work against the person they live in. Some of them don't even know they live in the person. And all of this is entwined. Uh, demons and altars are entwined. Uh, the structure is very much connected and some of the um, items that have been placed in her through satanic uh, magic surgery, like a castle, might extend up through several different structures. So the whole thing is very much entwined. It's been built up over many years. And so we're talking here about a human mind, about their identity, uh, which was never allowed to form uh, normally. Uh, so their identity is all broken up into many parts. Their whole understanding of life has not been allowed to form normally. So they, have, they believe a lot of lies about who they are and about life. Uh, there are years of lost memories uh, their, their thought patterns are different than those of a person who wasn't abused. They believed a lot of lies because the cult uh, pounded lies into them over and over again, uh, trying to make them believe that good is evil, that evil is good, and, and so many things that are backwards. I call it backwards thinking from uh, normal thought processes. They're, they have many learned responses and habits and then uh, tremendous emotional pain. So this is very complex. And when you look at the complexity, you have to ask the question, how could anybody counsel someone like this? How could anybody minister? Who would know uh, which personality to talk to first, which demons to cast out? Um, where would you even begin in all this complexity? Well, the cults know that uh, nobody can dismantle what they've done. Uh, that's totally impossible. But uh, when we try to do it on our own, we can cause a lot of damage. If we try to um, determine who we talk to that day, which alternate personality, uh, if we go in with a planned agenda, uh, we can do a lot of damage. Uh, when I first started in the Satanic Ritual Abuse Ministry, I had no idea what to do. And God brought me a woman who was diagnosed paranoid, schizophrenic, bipolar. She'd been hospitalized many times in psychiatric wards. She'd had um, seven uh, sessions of electric shock treatments. And her life was a terrible mess. And here I was. I didn't know anything. I had, hadn't had any counseling courses. Um, I was just a layperson, and what was I to do with this? All I knew was God said, 
I'm calling you to this ministry and I'm going to start bringing people to you with he did, which he did. So, not knowing what to do, the only thing I could do was pray and ask Jesus what to do. So I learned very early that um, I couldn't do it, but there is one who could, and that is Jesus. And so I learned to ask him to come and say, Lord Jesus, what do you want to do uh, with this lady today? Uh, God, you know everything about her. You know what happened to her. You know where all the personalities are. You know her levels. You know the programming. Lord, lead us today in what you would have us to do. And then I would trust that God would speak to her through her spirit. She's the one that lived it all. She's the one that sees demons. I don't. She's the one that could hear uh, the audible uh, voice of God or if not audible, at least very strongly, um, much more strongly than I could. And so I learned just to be there as a person who prays, as a person who knows the Bible. Uh, when I meet an alternate personality who's been told a lot of lies, um, I know that what the truth is, and I can help her discard the lies and believe the truth. Uh, I can cast out the demons. There's a lot I can do without um, initiating it all, without determining what we're going to do. So I was very successful with this lady. Uh, she was uh, very, the first lady, she was very highly programmed. She had 18 levels in her upper structure. She had 18 levels in the pit. And she had thousands of altars and very sophisticated programming. And uh, in three years, uh, she was completely free from all the uh, SRA and uh, the dissociation and um, there were no hospitalizations and so God had led me uh, and I was, it was just amazing what could be done when I let Jesus uh, do all the, the ministry himself. I am not a counselor. I have never taken counseling courses. Well, I took one counseling course uh, towards a master's degree. And when it came time to take the second course, the Lord said, I don't want you doing this. And I believe the purpose in that was that there are not enough counselors uh, and trained professionals to minister to all the people who are satanically ritually abused. There are so many, many people who have been abused in this way. I have no way of calculating how many. I just see it. Uh, I've seen it in all of our churches. I've seen it in my family. Uh, so many places. And we need a vast army of persons to minister to satanically ritually abused. And it doesn't require any special training. Uh, it doesn't require any special degrees. What it, what it does require is that God calls you. It is very important that anyone who ministers to satanically, richly abused persons, it's very important that you be called by God. And uh, God only calls people to this ministry who have a relationship with Him, who know the Bible, uh, who, whose lives are in such uh, an order that you're not going to have your own life disintegrate as you minister to these people uh, because it does take a lot of time and you do come under attack from demons I won't lie to you you do but we have the, the power of God and we have his leading and the Holy Spirit within and so um, I have never been harmed by this in any way um, and as long as we let Jesus do the work uh, we shouldn't have any problems so after I had ministered to this woman, and um, she had been restored, and there were several others that I had ministered to, uh, we moved to another city to take a new church. And um, I met a lady, a, a pastor in the area, who had a lot of counseling courses under her belt. And she and I became friends. And one day I was at her house, and she bought out her counseling notebook. And it was about yay thick. And she had all these instructions on what to do. Uh, when you're counseling someone, as I said, I don't counsel, I minister, but she was a counselor. 
and I somehow, you know, along the way I got to thinking, well, gosh, I need to be a counselor too, because that's just the mindset we have today, that uh, counselors need to take care of these people, that laypersons can't do this. So anyway, she showed me her notebook, and she said, you know, when you deal with uh, schizophrenia, which I was in satanic ritual abuse, she said, um, you know, there's two ma main spirits there. It's, uh, it's rebellion and rejection. And then she brought out this paper, and she showed me this uh, paper on, rege on rejection. It was like a, a tree and um, with all these different limbs that were labeled for different uh, uh, characteristics of a person who's been rejected and the root system and what uh, rejection is all rooted in and I looked at that paper and I thought oh my goodness I don't know any of this you know how can I minister when I don't know this so she said well I'll loan you uh, a paper so I took the paper home and the next day when I was ministering to my SRA lady that we'd been making a lot of progress I said you know, I think we need to change direction today. Uh, you've ob obviously suffered a lot of rejection, and I'm going to minister to you today for rejection. And I started uh, talking to her about the different uh, boughs on this tree that were labeled various things, and about the roots of it. We weren't getting anywhere, and she said, could we please just go back to doing what we've been doing all along? I said, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I set it aside and, and went back to, okay, Lord, lead us now. Who do you want us to talk to next? And we continued on being very successful. So it doesn't take a lot of special training, but we do need to understand what we're dealing with in satanic ritual abuse, that there are different levels, that there are altars and different kinds of altars, and that we have to deal with demons, and just an, a little understanding of how it all works and then we can minister very effectively. And this is uh, the burden on my heart uh, to awaken the church that we don't have to have a lot of, a lot of uh, professional uh, background to deal with the most severely uh, abused people, the most emotionally disturbed people. If we're called by God, God will lead us and it's amazing what we can do when we just let the Holy Spirit have his way.